Okay, so uh, today we are going to speak about modified guns osteotomy. So, yeah, what is basically a uh, modified guns osteotomy? So, don't be scared. Don't look at this entire uh, uh, slide, but only know that modified guns osteotomy through a safe surgical dislocation is used for young adults and adolescents in whom we want to preserve the hip joint. Okay, now all of these conditions, the nine conditions which have been mentioned above, which includes osteochondroplasty, rim trimming, acetabular rim dissection, a labral suturing, uh, acetabular fracture repair, modified Dunn's osteotomy for SCFP, sinovectomy, loose body removal, relative neck lengthening, uh, for Perthes, femoral head reduction osteotomy, as well as light bulb technique for AVN. All of these are techniques in which we want to retain the femoral head and we want to increase its longevity. So basically, in young adolescents and adults in whom you want to preserve the hip joint, there is an indication of doing a safe surgical dislocation and a modified dunce osteotomy, which is one of the procedures which can be done through that approach. Now, before we reach there, let's talk about the anatomy of the hip. Okay, so this is the hip joint seen from the anterior aspect. So we have the uh, common femoral artery from which we have the uh, profunda femoris artery from which we have two branches, the lateral and the medial circumflex femoral artery. The artery of our importance is the medial femoral circumflex artery, which uh, winds uh, more anterior to the uh, obturator external muscle and then uh, comes along the anterior aspect of the quadratus femoris and between the quadratus femoris and the short external rotators, it gives off its terminal branches. So the terminal branches of the medial circumflex femoral artery are going to be the trochanteric branch, which is seen here. Yeah, so we have the trochanteric branch, which is seen here. And then we have the deep femoral circumflex artery, which deep branch, which continues below the or anterior to the short external rotators. Okay, so if you see the last picture, you have the trochanteric branch, which is one of the branches. And then we have the deep branch, which gives off the four to five retinacular vessels. Okay. Now, as we know, we have the lateral epiphyseal artery, which is nothing but the retinacular vessels. And if you see this photo micrograph, it is this particular artery over here, which starts from the superior aspect, comes along the femoral neck and then deeps, uh, goes deep into the Epiphysis. So this is called the lateral epiphyseal artery, which is a branch of the medial circumflex femoral artery. Same thing, even if you see the other photomicrograph, you have the retinacular vessels which are coming up and then they dive almost 90 degrees to supply the epiphysis and they almost supply the entirety of the epiphysis still here. So all of this is your weight bearing portion. Only the very, very medial part has a blood supply from either the uh, the ligament of wheat break or through the ligament of ligamentum teres. Okay. That supplies only the lower portion and all of that lower portion is important for weight bearing. Okay. So why modified turns in SCFA? So we know that the displaced unstable SCFA is a very serious orthopedic condition and it has a lot of complications like osteonecrosis, uh, chondrolysis, deformity, which will lead to significant dysfunction. Okay. Now for generations together, what we have been doing as orthopedic surgeons is to do a in situ fixation of this, uh, of this deformity of the SEFE. Now what this does is it prevents further progression of the slip but it does not correct the deformity. So why did we do this for all these years? Because any procedure which required realignment of the femoral head had a very, very high rate of osteonecrosis. And that is why to this date, even as we speak, in situ fixation of the femoral head is your standard gold standard technique for uh, stable and for many unstable SCFEs as well. Okay, because it is a difficult procedure. The modified dunce procedure is a difficult procedure and it is important that all procedures which require any salvage of the femoral head 
while correcting the deformity you need to protect the posteriorly located vascular retinaculum if you cannot protect this vascular retinaculum your surgery is going to be pointless so to protect the vascular retinaculum many different surgeries are there there can be a limited anterior reduction of the femoral neck there can be a uh, femoral neck osteotomy through the smith peterson's approach there can be the parsh technique of course and we have the last be the modified duns uh, procedure so if we see a normal patient the retinaculum comes from the posterior femoral leg supplies the epiphysis if there is a slip the femoral neck is slipping posteriorly and uh, the femoral neck is going into varus what happens is in an acute does not matter but when it becomes chronic we have callus formation in the posterior neck which puts extra pressure on the blood supply so after the callus formation has taken place if we try to reduce the femoral neck then that femoral neck that extra callus will disrupt the retinacular blood supply that is why we do not do a reduction of the femoral neck in a chronic scfp we just do a in situ fixation as is shown in this fix this picture this in situ fixation makes sure that whatever retinaculum is present retinacular vessels are present they will remain as such and the slip will not progress because of your pinning now what is the modified duns procedure in a modified duns procedure we open the femoral neck through a safe surgical dislocation we dislocate the epiphysis we remove or osteotomize portions of the epiphysis the neck shortening osteotomy and we remove out all the extra posterior callus which is seen after that the retinacular vessels which have already been saved because of our safe surgical dislocation and retinacular flap we put it back along with the epiphysis and now this reduction here of the epiphysis is a tension free reduction of the femoral epiphysis okay so this is modified duns osteotomy okay so let's just skip this okay now remember forget the top part the concept is to have a safe and reproducible technique the concept is to have a safe and reproducible technique to put the femoral head back where it belongs okay but remember even in experienced centers the rates of avn and chondrolysis are still quite high okay so if there is no experience with this procedures it's better not to forage into these surgeries okay so indications in scfe are any hip which would have failed otherwise anyways okay so these are a dislocated unstable slip because the rate of avn in an unstable slip is already more than 50% a high grade or moderate grade slip with incomplete physial healing or hips which have displaced even after in situ fixation so these are your indications for scf so for modified duns osteotomy in scf now before we operate we need to evaluate every patient and there has to be a thorough evaluation why because if it is a non idiopathic cause of scfp say it is hyperparathyroidism or if it is a, a renal rickets something which can be reversed it's always better that you reverse the problem because it helps in the physical healing that is why a thorough history to elicit the factors that may be associated with a non idiopathic scfp especially in relation to the age the weight of the patient the past medical history and the family history obesity of course another major risk factor hypothyroidism is a risk risk factor growth hormone deficiency is a risk factor growth hormone excess is as well a risk factor for scfp apart from history we need a complete radiographic evaluation to find out the degree of the deformity to make sure it is not a mild deformity because if it is a mild or a moderate deformity you might as well get uh, get away with a in situ fixation it is only the severe varieties which require a modified duns osteotomy it has to be a chronic scfe again 
and we also need to look at the contralateral hip because if it is also at risk then you need to do a in situ fixation for the contralateral hip as well now of course when you doing a complex procedure you always want to know the assessment of the physial healing we need to have a three dimensional visualization of the femoral deformity the acetabular morphology and all of this will help us with the pre operative planning okay 